If October's election is about who cares more about the environment, the Liberals are going to win. It's that simple. Justin Trudeau, Catherine McKenna, they've not been able to shut up about climate change, this thing that's supposedly killing us all since taking office back in 2015, nearly four years ago. But there's an upside to this for Conservatives, and I'd say for ordinary taxpaying Canadians, which is that the majority of people don't actually make the environment their top priority when they're voting. Now, whether they should or shouldn't is something I'll let you decide, but I want to talk about the facts here. I ran as a candidate for office in last year's provincial election in Ontario. My team and I knocked on 21,000 doors, had thousands of conversations with people in my little pocket of the province in London, Ontario. And one of the questions I'd ask everyone is, what are the issues you care about? What are your priorities? And the number of people who told me they care about the environment as their first order of business, one. That was it, one person. Everyone else was concerned about jobs, the economy, more people were concerned with social issues than were concerned about the environment. Just one single person said that was going to be the issue that sways their vote. The reason I bring this up is because Andrew Scheer has unveiled the Conservative Party of Canada's approach to the environment, a plan called a real plan to protect the environment, something that comes in at 60 pages and 11,000 words for the Conservatives to say we're doing something about climate change that doesn't involve taxing. And there are some good details in the plan. It talks about fostering innovation, letting the green energy sector be driven by private sector growth rather than public subsidies, as has been the approach by liberal governments, federal and provincial. I don't necessarily like all of the boutique credits that are incorporated in this plan, but I think there's a lot of meat in it. But when Andrew Scheer puts out such a comprehensive and substantive plan on the environment, look at the backlash. Kim Campbell goes on TV to call it uh, basically a bunch of hooey. You've got the Toronto Star writing an op-ed saying that it's going to do nothing and it's going to cost a lot of money while doing it. You've got a Toronto Star news article taking aim at it. You've got all of the predictable chorus of critics of Andrew Scheer who are never going to like things that Andrew Scheer does that are saying this is a bad plan or at the very best an ineffectual plan. So the Conservatives are never going to win over the support of the people who care about the environment. I think the bigger thing to point out here is that that's a really small number of Canadians. Let's take a look at just the carbon tax, for example. A forum poll came out a few weeks back that found Canadians are in fact divided on the issue. But you've got about 45% who are opposed to the carbon tax, whereas those who support it are a little over half that. And the most important thing is that the group that opposes it is a lot more motivated to let it sway their vote than the group that supports it. People that support the carbon tax do not put it at the top of their priority list, meaning that if the battle is fought over the carbon tax, it's going to be Justin Trudeau's people that are probably staying home. This is a very important issue because environment policy is important. We live in the earth, we should protect the earth. But you're never going to do that through ceding to the left, which has put up this alarmist narrative about the environment at every turn. The only people that think climate change is killing us all and we've got to stop it through taxation are Justin Trudeau and Catherine McKenna. And thankfully for Canadians, they don't represent the majority. For True North, I'm Andrew Lawton.